For the next week, I'm going to live alongside the Biasha, absorbing their core survival skills. My host will be Mr. Ja. He lives in this wooden home with his family. And village elder Mr. Gwyn will be teaching me the traditional Biasha methods. I want to learn their way of life. But before I'm accepted by the Biasha, I have to complete many challenges. After navigating dense forests and raging waters and living from the land, I will strike out alone. My mission, to reach the Biasha traditional fishing grounds and return with the haul of fish. Only then will I earn a gun of my own. To fully immerse me in the Biasha life, Mr. Gwyn is putting me straight to work in the valleys surrounding the village. These are the Biasha rice fields. Waterlogged terraces cut into the steep, fertile mountainsides that provide the perfect conditions to grow the crop that sustains them. This entire valley, for as far as you can see, has been manipulated with shovels and hoes. Glutinous or sticky rice grows best underwater. The Biasha manage the irrigation of the paddies using a complex series of channels and ditches, all fed from a natural spring high in the mountains. They're maximizing every little bit of water that they can get, essentially creating this ginormous wetlands. These are ideal conditions, not only for growing rice, but also for all kinds of animals that in turn fertilize the land and offer more sources of food. They've created an ecosystem. But a thriving ecosystem brings with it one major risk. What, sure? The wetland is the ideal hunting ground for a top predator. Sure. He said the snake is right under here. There's, holy cow, that's a cobra. This is a big snake. I have not found the end of it yet. Oh my gosh. Look at it. Look at its head flare up. Flattening its head is a warning. Cobras can raise a third of their body off the ground and still strike forward at their prey with a venomous bite. There we go. Oh man. The neurotoxin in their venom will spread rapidly in the victim's bloodstream, causing respiratory failure and death. They're very, very smart. If you see his eyes, they are just locked right on me. It's just a pursuit predator. Oh, look at that. The Chinese cobra doesn't just bite. It can spit venom and blind me from two meters away. Holy cow. And it landed right on my trowel there. Wow. Oh, wow. These cobras are getting harder and harder to find because people just are scared of snakes and they get rid of them. They either take a shovel to them, a machete, and even around here, they've got guns. So uh, I'd really like to see if I can get this snake back there in the wild forest. Now that this amazing predator is out of harm's way, Ooh. we can get to work. To fully understand Biasha life, I must learn to farm this land. The paddies are planted in May and harvested in October. The first step is to plow the field and dig up the weeds. And the Biasha have harnessed a formidable beast for the job. Mr. Gwyn. Water buffalo were domesticated in China about 4,000 years ago, but they still have a wild side. 
，你你把它你干的干好啊，你把它改下去来，我教你。哎，哎，来。谢谢，哎，好，好，好，好了。